Hello friends, I'm Tim Wildsmith, and in this video we're going to be taking a closer look at Be Thou My Vision, a new daily devotional book from Crossway and writer Jonathan Gibson. All right, I'm really excited about this video today. Most of the time I'm reviewing actual Bibles, but occasionally I do Bible-adjacent or Bible-related books and material, and that's what this is. This is called Be Thou My Vision. It's, it's called A Liturgy for Daily Worship. Crossway recently released this. The, the writer is named Jonathan Gibson, and it's basically a 31-day liturgical devotional guide. And for, for, a, for a, a way to kind of have daily worship, wh whether by yourself or with your family, and I... I saw it come out. I saw a few people posting about it. This beautiful box is hard to miss. People posting about it online. And then a couple of people, a couple of different people reached out to me, having watched my channel and knowing a little bit about me and said, hey, I think you would really like this. So I got a copy and they were right. I really love it. I've been using this for about the past week and a half. Um, I'm reading through the Bible in a year. I've been sharing that with my year in the Bible series on this channel. But I started using this as well for just some daily worship. And it's been awesome. I, I really really have loved it. And so I'm going to do an overhead and kind of show you how it works, but I wanted to share a little a quick setup of, of how I got to this and why I think it's meaningful for me in particular. So this is like just a little background. Like I, I grew up in like the world of like evangelical Christian culture in America, right? The American bubble of American evangelicalism, you know? So um, my parents, we moved around a little bit when I was a kid, but they always made it a priority when we landed somewhere new to find a great church where the pastor preached from the Bible and they had great ministries for me and my sister, whatever ages we were, we were at. So we went to Baptist churches, evangelical free, Presbyterian, non-denominational churches. Whenever we landed somewhere, they'd find a good church and I would be in Awana. I learned so much about the Bible from this program called Awana in the Midwest when I was a little kid. And then youth group was what we called it when I was in middle school. And high school and that was a big part of our lives and the expression of church was on Sundays you would go to like a Bible study or a Sunday school class and then you would go to worship and you know back in the 80s and 90s it was like a choir and an organ or like a praise team and then it kind of morphed into like you know a band leading worship and then a pastor who would normally preach a sermon for 25 to 30 minutes you know a topical series or, or working through a book of the Bible that was kind of Sunday mornings there was these gatherings throughout the week small groups things like that youth group and then on a daily basis, the kind of expectation for Christians was like this, this personal devotions. We, we often called it quiet time, right? You had quiet time in the morning. You had devotions where you were reading the Bible and praying. And I saw this modeled for me. I mean, every day when I can't, got ready to come go to school, I'd come down the stairs. And my mom would be in our, our living room at the front of our house on her knees often praying or reading her Bible. Like that was clearly an important part of her life. And I'm so thankful that I got to witness that as a child. Um, but if I'm being honest with you, like... That was something that was always a, a tough rhythm for me to get into. I love reading the Bible, right? I can, I can spend time reading the Bible, and I'm doing that right now, daily, reading through in a year. But particularly the prayer part of it has been something that I've gone through waves where I love to pray, but it's been keeping that rhythm and making it a, a regular habit has been tough for me. And one of the things I love is that in the introduction of this book, Jonathan Gibson basically says that. Let's be honest. Like, sometimes prayer can be the most difficult part of this, of this rhythm. And what, what I'm... I'm explaining all this to say I did not come from a tradition like many of my friends out there who you have the Book of Common Prayer, right? The thing that holds the church together is this Book of Common Prayer and daily worship, the common worship. We, we spent some time um, in the Church of England when Becca and I were over at Oxford and we really loved that. But like I was not until like my mid-30s before I'd ever even heard of the Book of Common Prayer or owned a copy of it. And it's really not something that I'm super familiar with. I haven't ever been actively a part of the Anglican Church other than that limited time in the Church of England or here in America, the Episcopal Church, that sort of thing. So I'm just unfamiliar with it, right? And so I think one of the things I, I always looked at that form of church and that expression of faith as being too rigid, like having this formula that you followed made me think that it wasn't authentic, it wasn't real, it wasn't meaningful. And I kind of looked down on it. Well, as I've gotten older, I've realized that having that structure, having that, that, that rhythm, is actually really helpful to me if I want to have a meaningful and authentic prayer life. It's, I go through these rhythms of using prayers from church history and things like that. That's what this book is full of. There's, there's a call to worship. I'm going to walk you through and show you all the different pieces of it, but you're, you're confessing sin, you're praising God, you're using historic creeds and catechisms and prayers from the church, even stuff from the Book of Common Prayer is in this book, and it's a daily rhythm, and it changes up a little bit every single day, so you're using different things. And it's just been, it's been very meaningful for me. So I say that to say, 
maybe you're, you're from a more uh, liturgical tradition and you already have this built in, this might not be your thing. You might actually like it. It might be a new, fresh rhythm of that. But if you're like many Christians around the world, like me, who come from a more evangelical or free church tradition, non-denominational, and you haven't really had a daily rhythm of worship and prayer that you can get around, this is a really, really helpful book to do just that. It doesn't take very long. You can sit down, you can work your way through it. You can do it by yourself. You can do it with your family. And, and I really love the, the structure that it's given me daily to connect with God, to, to pray and to focus and, and to ask the Holy Spirit to be with me as the day goes on. It's been really, really meaningful. So I wanted to share that before I kind of dove in and showed you all the specs, just to kind of tell you why I like it and what I think it's good for and, and, and for me, what it's meant to me. I just think it's really, really a special project. And so now we're going to uh, do an overhead here and I'm going to show you all the specs and walk you through how this works. Okay, here's the lovely box that comes with it. It just kind of slides right in there. It's got some information about Be Thou My Vision on the back and Dr. Gibson and then this beautiful design on the front cover. You might see this little line in there. That is, and people on my channel will laugh at this, that is when I opened the box and sliced it with a knife because um, I'm not very careful when I do that. But uh, very, very beautiful design. And the book just slides right in there and it will look very lovely on your shelf, you know, just sliding in there. So I really like that. The green really pops. It, it takes great photos. <laughs> um, and there's the design. It's a, it's a cloth over board. It has this cross on the front of it. Be thou my vision. Very lovely. It's kind of a, a, a tan beigey color. I like it a lot. It has three ribbons, green, red, and a yellowish gold. And I'll show you how those are used to mark. But very nice as far as the size goes. It's five and a quarter. Well, at the text block, it's five. Look at that. <laughs> that beautiful painting on the inside. It's five and a quarter inches wide. It's eight inches tall. And with the cover, it's about uh, an inch and a quarter thick. And I, I compare it actually to the Reader's Bible set that Crossway does. This is the Gospel edition of that six volume Reader's Bible. It's just a slightly bigger all the way around than that one and slightly thicker than that one. And you'll see that the typesetting, um, this one was printed and bound in Italy. It's like the next level when it comes to premium quality, but it's got a very similar um, typeface and things like that on the inside. So now let's open this up. Again, those end sheets on both the front and the back are beautiful, the beautiful image with that green color kind of popping out. You can see I've already used this one quite a bit and so it's opened up a little bit and it really lays a lot flatter than it did out of the box, which I think it's gonna age well over time. You get some notes here from folks like Tim Keller, Dane, or Dane Ortland, uh, Kathleen Nielsen, other people kind of recommending this. Title page, Be Thou My Vision, A Liturgy for Daily Worship. Jonathan Gibson here is the Copyright page. I know some people like to look at all of that. All the different factors in there. You'll notice here that it says hardcover edition and then Westminster Theological Seminary. The WTS bookstore has a special um, cowhide edition, a brown cowhide edition where the pages are rounded. It looks quite nice um, and not that much more expensive than, than this hardcover edition. So um, some dedications in the front. Table of contents. I'm going to walk you through this. Here's a preface, just a note from Dr. Gibson about writing this, the acknowledgments. Um, and then I love this. I would definitely encourage you to read this. Part one, Daily Worship in Scripture. This, this uh, basically an article here for the Scriptural Foundation for Worship. He kind of walks through some of these things. And this is where I noted that here he says, let's be honest, where is it? Let's be honest, prayer is the hardest part of our devotion and often devotions and often leaves us feeling distracted and directionless. He's just kind of talking openly and honestly about, about wanting to have a little bit more depth and structure. And I really, really like that. And then this is the format of everything. I'm going to walk you through this step by step because basically, as it says, there's 31 days of guided devotions through liturgy. The order of everything, the liturgy, the structure stays the same. It's fixed every single day, but the elements change. Some things change every day. They're different all 31 days. Some days repeat on a cycle every week, that sort of thing. So it starts with a call to worship. Now, real quick, on the, the typesetting here. There, there, I couldn't find anything specific about the typeface and the size, but I measured it with some tools and it seems to me to be about a 10 point type size. Really comfortable, spaced well on the page. The paper is very creamy and, and quite opaque. It's, it's, it's very lovely. It feels a lot like a novel and it's, it's very nice. So the daily liturgy starts with a call to worship, 
31 different scripture readings alternating from Old Testament to New Testament. Then you move into a prayer or song of adoration. This is 31 prayers from church history that are repeated monthly as you kind of go through every, every 31 days, um, including the doxology, which is repeated weekly. Then you get into a reading of the law, seven scripture readings, so they're going to be repeated weekly. Confession of sin is 31 prayers from church history. The assurance of pardon is 31 scripture readings, again, alternating Old and New Testament. Then we get to a reading of creeds. So it goes the Apostles' Creed, followed by the Nicene Creed, and then the Athanasian Creed in three parts. And it kind of goes through a chiasm. So it goes Apostles, Nicene, days two through five, or the three parts of the Athanasian Creed. And then you go back, Nicene, Apostles. So it does that um, for, for repeating on a cycle in that chiasm. Oops, sorry, I came down too soon. Then we go to the Gloria Patre um, every day for the praise. You can have two different versions alternating weekly. Catechism. So if I pull this back here, they've got the Heidelberg Catechism and the Westminster Short Catechism in an appendix back here. And so the idea here is if you jump back here during this part, if you read one, the, one, one part of the catechism each day, you'll do the entire Heidelberg Catechism, you'll do the entire Westminster Catechism, shorter catechism, and then you can come back and do the entire Heidel catechism, Heidel, Heidelberg Catechism a second time, and that's 365 days if you do one piece of it each day, which is really neat. Then you get to the prayer for illumination, seven prayers from church history, repeated weekly. This is a scripture reading plan. So they have the uh, McShane Bible reading plan in the back here, another index. You can follow that if you're not familiar with that. It's um, basically about four chapters a day, and, and it goes Old Testament and New Testament. And if you read through this plan through a year, you'll read the entire Old Testament once, the entire New Testament, and Psalms twice. So follow, following the scripture reading, they go into a time of prayer. So there is 31 prayers from church history as a prayer of intercession, and then it prompts you for further petition to pray personal prayers, prayers for the church, prayers for the world, and then every day closes with the Lord's Prayer. There's a note here that there's a, an appendix in the back following the Bible reading plan with the collects from the Book of Common Prayer, so you can supplement those in here for the prayer of intercession. There's a lot of elements of the Book of Common Prayer in here, a lot of... Um, church, uh, early church prayers and things like that from across church history. There's a lot from the Reformation, but there's uh, a lot from other places as well. Um, and then I'll just show you how it goes. So going to day one, so you see, I'm going to say it starts on page 39. It's four or five, five or six pages, right? And so you sit down, this is going to take you probably 10, 15, 20 minutes, starting with the call to worship. On day one, it's Psalm 147. Then you move into adoration which on day one is the doxology. The reading of the law here is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22. The confession of sin is from the Book of Common Prayer, the 1552 edition. The assurance of pardon is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 11. The creed for day one is the Apostles' Creed, which starts here and ends on this side of the page. There's the Gloria Patri for the praise. And you get to your catechism, so it prompts you to go back to Appendix 2. So theoretically, I would have this ribbon back here, my second ribbon. If I'm on day one of the year, I would start with the first piece of the Heidelberg Catechism. Coming back, then we get into the Prayer for Illumination. This one was written by, oh, it's from the Middleburg Liturgy. And you get into the Scripture reading. So again, you jump back to the, uh, after the, uh, the catechisms, the next index following the catechisms is the Bible reading plan. So Appendix 3, there you see it's four or five chapters a day, kind of bounces around. Day 1 is Genesis, Matthew, Ezra, and Acts. <clears throat> After the scripture reading, so for me, I'm not actually doing this because I'm doing the year in the Bible plan, so I'm kind of supplementing my own just straight through the year of the Bible. The prayer of intercession is by Johann Haberman. I'm sure he pronounced that differently back in the 16th century. He's a German theologian. Um, then you have further petition. That's the prompts for praying further personal church and world. And then the liturgy ends with the Lord's Prayer. So you can just see it's, 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 a, it's a structure for daily worship. It's a structure for these different elements that are drawing you to God. And yes, if, if you're just reading this and just powering through it, it's probably going to feel rote. It's not going to feel meaningful. It might feel formulaic. But if you really sit into this and dwell in it and, 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 
and press in a little bit, I think it can be really, really meaningful. It has been for me to just kind of um, draw different things out of me, insights, thoughts, um, and, and a form of structure to help me when, when praying has often come uh, challenging for me. So you get 31 days of this. So uh, the end of day 31 here and then into the appendixes. I'll just show you all of this. Musical tunes for the doxology is Appendix 1. The catechisms are Appendix 2. The Bible reading plan is Appendix 3. And then the uh, collects that I mentioned from the Book of Common Prayer, which I have my third ribbon there, are Appendix 4. So there's also an appendix here at the end with an author and liturgy index, and then some blank sheets of paper. So for the ribbons, I have the green ribbon marking where I am each day, the red ribbon taking me back to the catechisms because I'm doing that as I go, and then the yellow rhythm ribbon for those collects so I can use supplement with some of those as I go. But as you can see, really beautifully designed, um, well laid out as far as the book goes, and then just the structure of everything as you're praying through. It's, it's, it's very nice. So there you have it. That's Be Thou My Vision, a liturgy for daily worship. I, I've obviously really enjoyed this and shared about that, and I would love to know what you think. So leave me a comment. Let me know if you have any questions about this. Drop those in the comments as well, and I will get back to you with an answer. I'll put a link in the description of this video to where you can purchase one of these and check it out for yourself. I'll also put links to Bible Review Blog on Instagram and Facebook. We've got a great community out there that we would love for you to be a part of. Before you go, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. I have more reviews like this of Bible-related books as well as lots of Bibles and unboxing videos and things like that. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time.